So there's a new version of Video AI, the desktop video enhancement application for Mac OS and Windows made by Topaz Labs. The first version of which I reviewed a little over a year ago here on my channel and I found it to be an excellent utility. But this new version of Video AI is not just like a small point update or a little design refresh or anything like that. This is a completely new and different application. They have read engineered everything, they have redeveloped everything, re-architected everything from the ground up, not only to make the application better and faster, but to also make the user experience of the application better. So what is Video AI? Well, it is a standalone desktop application that makes your videos look better. And here in a nutshell is how it works. You select one or more videos on your desktop, you drag them into Video AI, you then select one of your imported videos, and then you choose an enhancement from the preset menu at top right. And there are a number of options in this menu, including upscaling low res to high res, and that could be 480 and 720 to 1080 HD. You could also do 1080 to 4K, 4K to 8K, or you could go crazy and do 1080 to 8K. You could do that as well. And the way that upscaling in video AI is different from say, you know, just blowing up a video 200% on the, on the timeline is that video AI, when it upscales lower res to higher res, it goes in and it uses machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to go in and fill in those missing details. And this is something that I've used with my own videos, upscaling older 1080 videos to 4K, and the results by and large are surprisingly natural and authentic looking. And then another option in that preset dropdown menu at top right is the option of creating slow motion video. And every time I see the app do this, and I've watched it do it a number of times now, every time it blows my mind. I think it's magical. It's so cool. Basically what it does is it takes your, your original footage and it doesn't matter what frame rate it was originally captured at. It could be 24 frames per second. It could be 25, it could be 30 and it takes those frames and it stretches everything out. And then it goes in and fills in the missing gaps. It goes in and creates new frames in between the real frames in order to create more frames per second so that then the footage can be slowed down. And the results can be surprisingly natural and real looking. I mean, it, you can't tell the difference between what was the original frame and what was a new frame created by Video AI. It all just gels together. It's very smooth. It's very real looking. Now you do have to make sure that you choose the appropriate AI model because there are a couple of options in there and one is better for um, for like motion blur than the other one. So you do need to kind of, you know, check both. But either way, the result oftentimes is very striking and very surprising. And the footage just, it just looks like it was captured using a far more expensive camera. Another preset option is stabilization. And this is new, by the way, in this new version of Video AI. This did not exist in the first one, the one that I reviewed before. If you are a Premiere user, you've probably used the, the warp stabilizer effect. Well, this stabilization effect works similar to that in that it just, you know, kind of like punches in a little bit, stabilizes your subject and then crops off the edges. But then there is another stabilization option called full frame. And what this one does is instead of punching into the video and changing your field of view, instead it, you know, it doesn't punch in at all and any gaps and any, you know, holes that appear like around the edges of the frame when it's, you know, stabilizing the subject, it goes in and fills in those areas, almost like what like content aware fill in Photoshop would do. So the next step after selecting a preset is creating a preview. So you're able to see an enhanced version of your video. And to do that, you go to the, the little timeline scrubber that's underneath your video. You move the playhead to the area of the video that you want to generate a preview from. And then there's a little drop down so you can change the duration of the preview, how long you want it to be. And then when ready, you click the purple preview button at bottom right. And then Video AI will begin generating your preview. Now, at this point, you could, you know, just sit there and wait for it to finish, or you can go back to the enhancement panel. You could choose a different preset. You could choose any setting that you want over there, just, you know, make some kind of change. 
and then go back, click preview again, and another preview will be added to the queue. You can even select an entirely different video, choose an enhancement, click preview, and then that preview will be added to the queue. And the brilliant thing about previews that I really like is that each preview saves whatever settings were applied to it in the right panel. So say you were creating like uh, five previews of the same video, each with slightly different settings. Well, you could go in and choose which one of those five previews you like the most, click export, and whatever settings were used for that preview are then used for the export automatically. So you can have a queue of previews being generated alongside a queue of videos being exported simultaneously. You can even add new videos to video AI itself. You can drag in more videos and you know apply whatever settings you want and create previews or exports from those. And this is how video AI is just so fundamentally better from a user experience perspective compared to the first version that came out. Because in the first version that I reviewed, in that one, as soon as you click the export button, everything shut down. Like the app just went into like export mode and you can no longer use the app. You couldn't add additional videos to it. Effectively, you just had to sit and wait for it to finish whatever job it was currently processing before you could do anything more with it. So once you're more comfortable with video AI and you've checked out the different presets that are available, you'll probably want to start applying your own settings. You'll probably want to go into that right panel over there and start applying your own enhancements. And with these enhancements, you may mix and match whichever ones you want to use. You may enable or disable stabilization. You may enable or disable uh, enhancement. You can also change the frame rate of your video. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, you can go in and just tweak the settings exactly how you want. And once you have some settings that you're happy with, maybe some settings that you would want to reuse for other videos, well, you can save your own presets by going up to the top by that drop down menu and clicking that plus button to create your own. And by the way, video AI is not simply a utility that you would occasionally use to upscale your video, to change frame rate, to create slow motion footage, but rather it's an application that can also be used to improve the image quality of your footage without changing the frame rate, without changing the resolution. And that is something I actually do quite often, especially with aerial video created using a DJI Air 2S, which has a you know comparatively smaller sensor inside of it. So it tends to be a little bit noisier. Sometimes the detail and sharpness isn't, isn't as good as I would like. And if you want to experiment with that, what I would recommend doing is going to the enhancements module in the right column, and then in the parameters dropdown, choose manual. And there you will see options for detail, for clarity and for sharpness and denoising. And what I would recommend doing is clicking that estimate button that's in there, because then you're able to see what video AI sees, what video AI believes the settings should be for your video. And then you can go in and suit to taste. You can go in and you know turn up the details. You can turn up the sharpness, generate a preview, see how that looks. And if it doesn't look quite right, you're not too happy with it, just change the settings and generate another preview. So final thoughts here, is video AI worth buying if you are new to the application, if you're buying it brand new? Is it worth upgrading to if you purchase the original version of Video Enhanced AI? Well, I think it really comes down to you and how often you see yourself using a tool like this uh, to be upscaling some of your older footage. If you have like an archive of older, like 720, 1080 footage, and you want to reuse that footage in newer 4K footage, which is something that I do quite frequently, well, then I think you will definitely get some value out of it. If you, creatively speaking, you know, want to be creating slow motion footage, uh, and say you forgot to change your frame rate to like, you know, 60 or 120 when you're originally capturing footage and you're looking at some 24p footage and you're thinking, 
man, I wish I shot this in slow motion. Like that one little part there would be so good. Well, that's the thing you can do with video AI. You can just trim that video and create some really nice, very natural looking slow motion footage. So for me, I get a lot of value out of it. I use it all the time. And the good news is, is that you actually don't have to buy it. Like you don't, you can try it out. You can kick the tires, you can download a free trial and you can generate, uh, you know, slow motion footage. You can upscale some of those old videos that you have laying around, you know, in an old folder somewhere. Download a free trial of Video AI using the link in the video description below. It won't cost you a thing. Download it, install it from Mac OS and Windows and give it a try for yourself. By the way, if you're interested in Photo AI, which is the sibling application to Video AI, also made by Topaz Labs, except that one is made for uh, enhancing still images, denoising, sharpening, upscaling, I recommend checking out this video right here because I recently reviewed Photo AI here on my channel. So head over there and check out that video after this one. That's it, I'll see you next time.